Hello, I'm Tom Lee, and this is my program, Stories and Art, where I take traditional folk tales and I pair them up with paintings from museums around the world. And today I have several favorites that I want to share with you. I want to tell you one of my favorite stories. I want to show you one of my favorite paintings painted by one of my favorite painters that comes from one of my favorite museums. The painting that I want to share with you is this picture called The Charter Oak. And it was painted by Frederick Church in the year 1846 when he was just 20 years old. Now, as always, you can go to my website, www.tomleestoryteller.net, and you can download a copy of this picture, just like this, that you can print out and take a look at at home and maybe make a drawing or a sketch of it. Or if you'd like, you can go to the website of the Florence Griswold Museum. And that website is www.florencegriswoldmuseum.org. So what do you notice when you look at this picture? Obviously, there's a great big tree. And this tree is a real tree that grew in Hartford, Connecticut. And it was growing as far back as 400 years ago. Mr. Church grew up in Hartford and he saw this tree probably every day when he lived there. And it's a very famous part of Connecticut history. That's another long story that I might share with you another day. But right now, let's just think about this tree and how big it was. If you notice, you can see a woman talking to a little boy next to the tree. And I think Mr. Church put that little detail in there so we could have a sense of just how big this tree was. They say 10 or 12 people would have had to hold hands together to make a ring around the tree. Not too long after this picture was painted, this tree was struck by lightning and it fell down and it was chopped up into many pieces. And a lot of people in Connecticut have furniture that was made from this tree. There's even a chair in Mr. Church's house in Hudson, New York, and it's called the Charter Oak Chair. Now, you can visit the Florence Griswold Museum and see this painting there, but not right now. As everybody knows, museums and schools are closed because of the coronavirus, and we're all keeping safe. But you can visit the museum and take a walk on their beautiful artist's trail and see the beautiful gardens, as long as we keep a safe distance from each other. So I hope you'll visit the Florence Griswold Museum and their website. And now I want to tell you a fairy tale called Boots and His Brothers. Can you guess how it starts? Once upon a time, and such a time there was, it was not your time, and it was not my time, and it was not anyone's time. It was once upon a time. There was a king, and he lived in a beautiful palace, but he had some problems. Right next to the king's palace, there was a tree, and this tree was not a big tree. This tree was not a huge tree. This tree was an enormous tree. This tree was absolutely gigantic. It was so big. It had so many branches and so many leaves that the sun could never shine through the windows of the king's palace. It was dark and gloomy. Now, you're probably thinking, why doesn't the king just chop the tree down? Well. It wasn't a normal tree. Usually, if you take an axe and you chop a tree, it gets a little smaller and a little smaller until finally it falls down. Not this tree. If you took an axe and chopped at this tree, it didn't get a little bit smaller. It got a little bit bigger. And every time anyone tried to chop it, the tree grew bigger and bigger and bigger. But that wasn't the king's only problem. The poor king had no well. His castle was built on an enormous rock, and no one could dig a hole 
into that rock to get water for the king to drink. The king announced, if anyone can solve my problems, chop down this tree, dig a hole in this rock and fill it with water, I will give that person a great reward. Well, people came from near and far. They brought their axes, they brought their buckets, they brought their shovels. It didn't do any good. They took one swing at that tree, chip, chop, and the tree got bigger. And the king would say, no, 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 away with you, away with you. Now, it so happens, in this kingdom, there lived three brothers. There was the oldest, the middle, and the youngest. I do not know the oldest brother's name, and I do not know the middle brother's name, but I know the youngest brother's name. His name was Boots. At least, that's what everyone called him, because everybody thought this youngest brother was a bit of a foolish fellow. But the oldest brother was talking to his brothers one day, and he said, have you heard of this king? Have you heard of this great reward for just chopping down his tree and digging a well? I'm going to go and try my luck. I think I'll chop it down. And the middle brother said, oh, don't be too sure, brother. I think I'll go and I'll chop that tree down. And then Boots, the youngest, he spoke up and he said, well, I don't know if I can do it or not, but you never know what you can do until you try. So I think I'll come with you. Well, the oldest brother and the middle brother, they said, Oh, Boots, why bother? You're such a foolish boy. Just, just stay home. You'll never be able to do it. But Boots said, No, I think I'm going to come, and I think I'm going to try. So all three brothers walked off to the king's palace, and the journey took them into the forest. Now, Boots loved to walk in the forest. He loved to listen to all the sounds that he could hear, the wind blowing through the branches of the trees, birds chirping. But on this particular day, Boots heard an unusual sound. Chip, chop, chip, chop. And he said to his brothers, what do you think's making that strange sound? And his brothers just laughed at him. They said, oh, Boots, haven't you heard anyone chopping a tree before? But Boots said, now well, I'm curious. I want to go see what's making that sound. And his brother said, well, go ahead if you want, but don't expect us to wait for you. And Boots said, that's okay, you go on. I'll catch up. And he followed the sound deeper and deeper into the forest. And as he got closer, it got louder. Chip, chop, chip, chop. Until finally, Boots came to a tree and he saw an axe chopping the tree. But here's the thing. The axe was chopping all by itself. Nobody was holding it. Nobody was swinging it. It was just chipping and chopping and chopping and chipping. And Boots just watched it for a while. And then he said, so you're here, are you, little axe? And you chop and you chop? And the axe answered him. The axe said, oh yes, Boots, I've been here chopping and chopping for many years, just waiting for you to come and find me. Well, I found you now, said Boots, so let's get going. And he picked up the axe and he put it into his backpack and he ran to meet his brothers. And they laughed when they saw him coming. Well, Boots, they said, what was making the sound? Oh, he said, just an axe just an axe. He didn't tell them it was a magic axe. He didn't tell them that he had it right there in his backpack. And the three brothers kept walking through the forest. But it wasn't long before Boots heard another sound. Crunch, scrape, crunch, scrape. And Boots said to his brothers, hey, do you hear that? What do you think is making that sound? And his brother said, oh, Boots, you're always so curious about this and that. It's just someone digging. But Boots said, I'm going to go and see for myself. His brother said, well, go ahead if you want, Boots, but don't expect us to wait for you. Boots said, that's okay. You go ahead. I'll catch up. And again, he followed the sound. He got closer and closer until he came to a deep, deep 
hole. And way down at the bottom of the hole, do you know what he saw? A shovel. And do you know what it was doing? It was digging and digging all by itself. No one was holding it. No one was digging it. It just dug and dug. And Boots watched it for a while. And then he said, so you're here, are you, little shovel? And you dig and you dig. And the shovel answered him, oh, yes, Boots. I've been here digging and digging for many years, just waiting for you to come and find me. Well, I found you now, said Boots, so let's get going. And he just held out his hand, and the little shovel flew right into his hand. He put it into his backpack, and he ran to catch up with his brothers. Well, you know, they were teasing him and said, Well, Boots, what was making the sound? He said, Oh, just a shovel. Just a shovel. He didn't tell them it was a magic shovel. He didn't tell them he had it right there in his backpack. And they all kept walking. Well, after a time, Boots heard another sound. Can you guess? Trickle, 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 glug, 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 glug. Trickle, 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 glug, 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 glug. And he said to his brothers, what do you think's making that sound? And they said, well, Boots, can't you tell? it? It's just a river. And he said, I want to go see where it's coming from. And they said, well, go ahead if you want, but don't expect us to wait for you. Ah, he said, you go ahead. I'll catch up. So he walked into the forest following the sound, and sure enough, there was a river flowing by. But you know, Boots was curious, and he wanted to see where this river was coming from. So he walked along, and he walked along, and he noticed that the river grew a little narrower and a little narrower until he came to, you'll never guess, a walnut. Sitting on the ground in the middle of the forest, there was a tiny little walnut. And in this walnut, there was a hole. And out of the hole came water. All the water of the river was pouring out of this walnut. And Boots watched it for a while. And he said, so you're here, are you, little walnut? And you pour and you pour? And the walnut answered, oh, yes, Boots, I've been here pouring and pouring for many years, just waiting for you to come and find me. Boots said, well, I found you now, so let's get going. And he picked up the walnut. Oh, but wait a minute. It still had water pouring out of it. Boots took a little piece of moss, and he covered up the hole. Trickle, 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 trickle. and he put it into his backpack, and he ran to catch up with his brothers. Well, they said, what was making the sound? Oh, just water, he said, just water. He didn't tell them it was coming from a magic walnut, and he didn't tell them that he had it in his backpack. So, finally, all three brothers came to the king's palace, and there it was, that enormous tree. And the oldest brother said, I'm going to chop this down. And the king said, be my guest. And the oldest brother picked up his axe. And I have to tell you, this older brother, he was a big, strong fellow. And he took that axe and he swung, chip, chop. And the tree got bigger. And the king said, no, 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 away with you, away with you. And the middle brother said, well my turn. And maybe he wasn't the strongest guy, but he was fast. And he picked up that axe. Chip, chop! The tree got bigger, and the king said, no, 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 away with you, away with you. There's no one who can chop down my tree. And Boots said, uh, well, uh, what about me, your majesty? The king looked at him and said, you? Yeah. What about me? I, I think it's my turn. The king said, Boots, your older brother couldn't do it. Your middle brother couldn't do it. You think you can do it? 
And Boots said, well, you know, you never know what you can do until you try to do it, Your Majesty. So if you don't mind, I'd like to try. The king said, Boots, be my guest. Well, Boots knelt down on the ground and he took off his backpack. He opened it up and reached all the way down to the bottom and he took out the axe. And then he said, now, my little axe, chop and chop for me. The axe flew out of Boots' hand. It flew over to the tree and it began to chop, but it chopped so quickly. Chip chop chip chop chip chop chip chip chop chip chop chip chop chip chip chop chip chop chip chop chip chop chip 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 round and round that enormous tree. The axe went flying. Bits and pieces of wood were flying off so quickly the tree didn't have any time to get bigger. It chipped and chopped and chopped and chipped until crash. The tree fell to the ground, and the beautiful sunshine came flooding through the king's windows. And the king said, well, not bad, Boots, but you're not done yet. Do you think you can dig a hole in this rock? And Boots said, well, you never know what you can do until you try to do it. So he knelt down, he opened his backpack, he reached to the bottom and took out the shovel and said, now, my little shovel, dig and dig for me. The shovel flew out of Boots' hand. It flew over to the rock and it began to dig with a crunch and a scrape and a crunch and a scrape and a crunch and a scrape and a crunch and a scrape. And it dug and dug. Rocks and stones and pebbles were flying through the air until it dug a deep, deep hole. And it flew right back to Boots' hands. But he wasn't done yet. He knelt down. He opened his backpack. He took out the walnut. He took the moss off of the hole and said, Now, my little walnut, pour and pour for me. And the water began to pour from the nut. Trickle, 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 glug, 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 glug. Trickle, 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 glug, glug, glug. Boots put the walnut at the edge of the deep hole, and it poured and poured until the hole was just filled with water. The king had a little silver cup, and he reached down, and he took a taste of the water, and he said, Delicious. Boots, he said, you have chopped down my tree. You have dug a hole in this rock, and you have filled it with water. You shall have a great reward. And he gave Boots a bag of gold coins that was as tall as he was. And Boots was a pretty tall boy, so it was a pretty good reward. And that's the story of Boots and his brothers. And I hope you'll get to look at the Charter Oak by Frederick Church at the Florence Griswold Museum. And I hope you'll join me here again for another story another day. Thanks for listening. Hi, it's me again. I wanted to tell you a little bit about where the story Boots and His Brothers comes from. It's an old folk tale from Norway, and it was first written down by two men, Christian Apsjonsson and Jorgen Moa. And they wrote a book called Norwegian Folk Tales. And they wrote this book around 1840. And the stories that they put in this book were stories that people in Norway were telling, but not writing down. People told stories to one another and didn't necessarily think of putting them in books. And Christian Apsjonsson and Jorgen Moa were the first people in Norway to put these folk tales into a book. They got that idea from the Brothers Grimm uh, in Germany about 20 years before when they wrote Grimm's fairy tales. But I learned the story of Boots and his brothers from this great old book called Told Under the Green Umbrella. And you can see this book is pretty uh, beaten up. I like to call it well-loved. I bought this at a book sale at the Centerville Library on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. I think I paid a dime for it, but it's filled with wonderful old stories and has some beautiful illustrations as well.
it has a picture of boots and uh, the walnut and boots looking up at the king's tree ready to chop it down but the pictures that i like most are your pictures i love to see illustrations that boys and girls make for me after they listen to the story a lot of students tell me when they're listening they can see the story in their imagination so i'd love to see what your story looks like if you could make a sketch or a drawing and if you'd like to send it to me at my website www.tomleesstoryteller.net I'll put those pictures up on my website so we can share them with anyone that wants to see them. Okay, see you next time. Thanks a lot.